Cami Maddox from the James Cancer Hospital, and I'm accompanied today by Dr. Pierluigi Percou from Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center, Dr. Pamela Allen from Winship Cancer Center, and Dr. Jonathan Friedberg from Wilmot Cancer Center. And we're here today to have a discussion on the treatment landscape in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma. I mean, I think the majority of patients that are gonna have the potential to receive CAR-T, probably people are choosing to give them CAR-T products because there's an option, potential option for cure with that. Um, let's just talk a little bit about, is there, do you see reasons for patients not responding or patients, is there a way to predict patients who aren't gonna respond or who are gonna relapse or? I mean, there's certainly patients that we have trouble getting to CAR T cell therapy because the disease is just growing so fast and, and the manufacturing time and the slots and the, and the logistics. I can't say that we've had great success with any type of therapy in, in those types of patients where they're so sick that you can't get them to CAR T. But having some of these other, you know, these other um, targeted agents, I think, is is great and, and once we have the, availab the availability for um, some of the bispecifics, I, that, that's another place where I think that that could be helpful. I, mean, I think that some of, the, you know, some of the questions still revolve around uh, the relative role of uh, autologous stem cell transplant versus CAR-T. Uh, I don't think that that kind of algorithm has been finalized, um, right? And, uh, you know, there are, you know, CIBMTR data that were recently published that seem to suggest that at least in some, some, some of the patients, you know, did, you know, did better after, you know, with autologous stem cell transplant, um, the patient who did not achieve a, you know, a complete response uh, compared to, you know, CAR-T. Um, and uh, so I think it's open, uh, you know, whether autologous stem cell transplant is gonna go, you know, away. Uh, in the second line setting for DLBCL, but, you know, that would be interesting to, to see. I think one interesting direction that uh, we're tackling in the NCTN is to try to have an early intervention that may make CAR T cells work better. So uh, the observation is that if you get CAR T cell treatment in diffuse large B cell lymphoma, uh, and you have an early complete remission, most of those patients do very well durably. Um, but then there's a group who has uh, stable disease or partial response, and maybe about 30% of them, 25, 30% of them will convert to a complete remission and do well, but the majority of them will experience disease progression often relatively soon. So we feel that there's a window of opportunity where if you do an early PET-CT, say between day 30 and 60, and you're in that partial response category, you might be able to give them something else to convert them to a complete response. And we're about to open a trial that's going to look at a couple of different strategies, either a bispecific uh, with mosinotuzumab, uh, either uh, polituzumab or the combination, um, and compare that to the standard now, which is to wait and see what happens. And um, that's a relatively small trial to get some experience, but I think the concept uh, speaks to ways that you might be able to have combinations or sequences with CAR T cell therapy that could improve outcome. Almost like an early consolidation yeah. or sort of idea, yeah. Exactly, okay. and mm -hmm. it's for a defined treatment right. period as well. Okay. I think patients who progress after CAR T or you know, don't respond it can be very challenging to you know, find other treatments for. Some of it is just you know, if they have rapid progression of disease, some of it is counts can be a real issue. Um, but maybe each of you can just comment on what treatment options you try to pursue after CAR or how you think about sequencing the different options because as you've said a few times, you know, there's lots of options and nobody's doing the same sequencing. So if we're talking about standard of care options, you know, and not having clinical trials, uh, part of it depends on what their, as you said, like what their blood count looks like. But, um, and, and what their prior therapies and you know how far out from CAR T. So if if it's a while out from CAR T and they haven't had an auto transplant, for example, that is something that you could still potentially consider. Um, if it's earlier, then you know then then things like you know tafacitumab um, are you know things that we try sometimes. I mean, I think that they, you know they're not approved, but the data with the uh, bispecifics are look very interesting, and there are responses after CAR T cell failure. So, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll have, you know, one or more of those drugs available uh, soon. Um, 
Uh, and I, I agree also with, you know, Tafalan uh, for patients who, you know, uh, fail uh, CAR-T is, I'm not aware of data. Uh, I don't know if any here at the table is aware of that, but so, but I think that was, you know, that was something to, 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 to try. Um, and, um, and then the sequence is, the sequencing is really going to be, uh, you know, a key here in terms of trying to alternate between, you know, CD20 targeting versus CD19 targeting. And that might be somewhere where real world data might come in yeah. to play because there is a lot of experience, you know, people are kind of doing whatever and nice to see some real world data right. on what we're seeing with outcomes post because I think CD19 sequencing is a big thing right. or yeah. CD20 and um, can these agents be sequenced? How are they sequenced? I think as you said though at the beginning, for many of these patients it's very difficult yeah. to get anything. Um, just because the, the, you know, many of them are progressing quickly after CAR-T, they've had a lot of treatment in a short period of time, they still may be recovering from toxicities of the CAR-T cell therapy and given the kinetics of the disease, um, that may become our major unmet need. That's been, I feel like, generally my experience yeah. is when they're relapsing, it's quick, you know, it's quick and their counts are low and there's just really not a whole lot that you can do. So there's not really an answer to this, but do you think as we move CAR-T earlier into lines of therapy, I mean now second line approval that's being investigated in high risk front line, um, you know, that that'll change this, that it'll be easier to, or just more difficult to, to treat these patients? Yeah, I think that if they haven't been heavily pretreated, then they're going. Then certainly the treatment after CAR T is going to be a lot yeah, easier. I, I agree. I mean, I think one of the challenges in you know in terms of the standard of care menu, so is that we see these patients are going from front line chemo immunotherapy to second line chemo immunotherapy to yeah. third line chemo immunotherapy, and then at some point, you know, their myelosuppression becomes so severe and, and, and hard to recover that uh, even putting them on clinical trial is very, very difficult at that point because they don't meet the eligibility criteria. So. How about, this is an area in follicular where there's probably not as much experience, but any thoughts on, has anybody treated pa follicular patients post car progression and in effective agents or sequencing in that situation? I have not. I have not. <laughs> our, our patients have done pretty well, I have to say, who've gotten CAR, and it's a, it's a select group. I would speculate that given what we talked about before, with tolerability being better, that it will be easier to potentially do something else for those patients. And I think, again, uh, it's likely to become a reality very soon that we'll have a bispecific where there are data suggesting significant responses after CAR T cell treatment. So my guess is that would be the likely sequence that we will see.